Hi there, Chase here at Cole McCoy, coming to you again with another episode of In the Trenches. This is episode number 46. It's been a while. Uh, we took a little bit of a sabbatical, but big man, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm excited to do this one. I always say I'm excited, but I always mean it uh, because we haven't done this, really this podcast in a while. And being number 46, we're stacking them up. We've got some good content in the vault here, but um, it's nice to get back at it kind of knock some of these out with you. And uh, it's just always good to talk. We always get to talk. We work on work with each other on a daily basis, but to be able to do the podcast again is fun. So what are we talking about today in episode 46? Yeah, man, this, this has kind of been coming up a lot in kind of the forum world where people are talking about the industry and um, you know, you go back and forth with some of those uh, MLMs, <laughs> I guess is the best way to say it, but the difference between, or I guess the balance between an agent's personal responsibility for success versus what is the organization's responsibility to see that agent become successful. And I think that's actually a good thing to talk about. Um, I know in our day-to-day, it's more just, okay, this agent needs this, this agent needs that. Here's kind of what we're doing for, from our organization. But I think taking a step back and recognizing and celebrating those who are doing really well by their agents versus some that maybe need some work. And I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus, but I think it's a healthy conversation to have in the industry for any new agents listening for maybe if you're a, if you're an upline, some things to kind of think about uh, as far as determining your agent's success. And I think um, it's a beautiful marriage between the two, um, which is, I'm, I'm pretty excited to talk about because there, I think there's a lot of things that we can get into, um, and yeah, we'll, we'll see what what <laughs> what rabbit holes we get in. We go down on this, but I think um, I think it's going to be a healthy conversation to just really lay out where our heart is at and, and how we're wanting to help people. But also, you know, what an agent's what an agent's responsibility should be, and kind of checking those off as well. And um, you know, because I think especially in our industry, you have an agent that's not successful, and it could be for a multitude of reasons but they just jump ship from, from one group to another group, to another group, to another group. And they really are just kind of finding, trying to find the magic bullet when it's, you kind of have to look within and then vice versa, you have an agent that's doing all the right things, but maybe their setup is lacking and they just need, maybe there is a magic bullet for them because they're doing all the right things. And I think that's a good thing to kind of talk about and dive into. So. And it's um, a good topic yeah. of conversation, like you said, through social media, some of the more prevalent groups, it's been talked about, it's been argued, um, but it, it is a good topic just because it's, you know, for those that tune in here that don't have any type of affiliation, uh, we like to try and bring things to the surface that will help them make a decision on what organization would probably be the best fit for them. Because, you know, at the end of the day, this isn't a recruiting platform for us. We're not the best fit for everybody. We'd like to be, but we're just not. And so this will hopefully enlighten some out there that who catch this video. And, and even if it's just the audio online uh, to where they hear this and it's like, ah, okay, that's something that may not be the best fit for me. This organization over here probably will be. So to kick it off uh, episode 46, you've been in discussions online. You've seen the questions posed. You've seen, you know, lots of questions about, Hey, what about this company? Hey, what about that company? Where does this all derive from Mr. McCoy in terms of the genesis of this topic? As far as on my end? Yeah, in terms of your end and in terms of, I know you initially saw the comments, you've seen the questions, you know, you initially, where did you initially jump in on this head first to, to really start helping agents on, on it when it came up? Well, I guess you could say that I had my opinion on it, but I never really had a long form discussion on it to kind of break it down and, and see. And, and I think, I think where I'm at, I try to be very balanced with everything. Um, but and I'll say for anybody out there that yeah. sees you post, Yes, we do business together. Yes, you have your own company. You fly the FS flag. But you, in my opinion, are probably one of the most, you know, Switzerland guys out there that makes posts. You'll call it as it is. <laughs> Depending on who you talk to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you, are, yeah, very, you yeah. are very Switzerland on it. You're very fair. I, I will give you that. Yeah, I mean, I'm the first to say that, you know, I came from a captive organization making a 40% commission um, on a six-month advance. And did very well in, in 10 months, um, you know, eclipsed that six figure kind of earnings. So like, I'm not saying you can't make money at places. My, my goal is to say, Hey, if you're an agent looking, because we see 
multiple agents every single day. Hey, I'm talking to this group. Hey, I'm talking to that group. Hey, I'm getting into the industry. What are some things that I should be looking for? But also, you know, having that conversation is, you know, be, being the agent that any upline would die to have, that's also part of the conversation. And so, um, yeah, I, I guess just seeing constant comments over and over um, from, from different folks and then just, I've had the same conversation a bunch. I'm like, I feel like we should probably talk about this, have an honest conversation to really kind of break down where we're at with it. And, and ultimately this, this whole goal is for anybody listening is to help you make more money. Um, whether you work with me or, or one of these other 18 million organizations out there, it doesn't matter. We're all in this to, to cheer each other on, not, not to tear down. Um, but if an agent's asking a question, we have to be honest. Like, here's, here's how this works. Here's what you're going to run into. Can you make money there? Yes. But maybe here's some other questions to ask to kind of help you improve your business. I don't find it any different. And this is where I, I really don't care if feelings get hurt on social media of all places when, when you put your opinion out there, particularly for you, when your opinion is coming from experience. It's no different than if you go and you look at reviews on a place that you're going to take your family for vacation or a restaurant that you heard was good. You want to check it out and see what the reviews are on it. You know, we, we do this on a day to day. So if somebody says something, why is it okay for you to put stock in what someone says on, Hey, I wouldn't stay there. There were bed bugs. Well, same difference. If I, if I'm going to put my income and my livelihood on the line and somebody asks yeah. a question, what do you know about this place? Yep. There's a difference between educating and bashing, of course. Yep. You, you And you always do a great job at not bashing, but you're giving... Hey, a- I would like to say that sometimes I get a little fired up and I'm, I'm willing to be honest, like sometimes too honest, but I most of the time I feel like I do a really good job of that. I'll clarify. You know, I've had my moments where I get didn't. fired up. What's I would, that? Say, I would totally call you out if you didn't. I would say, you know, <laughs> you're a little harsh, but... I always, yeah. there's, there's others that we see will just come out with a flamethrower. You're not one of those. And I always respected you for that, which is why, you know, even though you recommend me on there, which drives me crazy, I love it. Don't get me wrong. I would recommend you. I would, you should recommend you. I know you don't self-promote, but um, I always find you to be fair. I'll be redundant on that point. But my whole point is re, we go and use reviews of everything else in life. Why yeah. is it not okay to, when someone asks a question, you know, if you have experience with this a company over here that's captive. Why is it not okay for a guy who was there to say, Hey, great place to learn the business. You can make money there, but in the long run, you don't own your book of business, this, this, and this LOA is crazy. Don't do it's okay. In my opinion, and people who get butt hurt over that typically are the ones that are the ones hurting the agent. So, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the, the folks that, that maybe, you can't do here's here's how I'll say it. I'm, I'm trying to choose my words carefully here. I can see that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you have testimony of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of agents saying the exact same thing, even if that agent didn't go to work, they didn't buy leads, they were lazy, mixed in with also agents who worked very hard, they bought the leads, they went to work, they did exactly what they were told to do. Maybe they just had videos to get trained on. Um you have hundreds of testimonies saying the same thing. It's not lies. Those are not lies. Like that's why Yelp exists. That's why these reviews exist. Like if you have the same people saying the same thing over and over and over, maybe there's something you can improve on. I'm just saying like, Stop taking it so freaking personal and just do yeah. some looking in the mirror. Yeah, Get better. It's an opportunity to grow. Like, if I have somebody that decides that I'm not the best fit for them, I'm like, great. I, I People laugh at me because I say this all the time. I would never want to fit a square peg into a round hole. I'd love to hear from your perspective what made them a better fit for you. And I've taken notes. Yeah. How can I get better to be, you know, maybe I've, it's just not a, a personality fit and that's fine. But how can I get better with my setup and with with the support that I give my agents to to see them grow and thrive and succeed? Like, you can't be all things for all people, but if there's an opportunity to grow and get better, you should welcome those opportunities. That's how we, that's how we all grow. Well, and so I one, think taking a step back to like, look at that and say, here, here's what I think I'm doing is pretty good, but like, I'm open to input here. Yeah. We're all in this process and growing together. That's so important. Well, number one, like, you know, this internally here, 
for us, we believe and have believed for the longest time, the best ideas, best concepts for the most part come from the field. Uh, that's something we've truly believed and we've empowered uh, our leadership team and the producers to tell us, hey, what do you see? What do you know? You know, what do you think? And we try and take that to the carrier level when they ask for advice, you know, RNA, EAP, some of these other, you know, ideas and, and think tanks that have been created. With that being said, and to your point, I think also the IMO, and this is kind of me sitting in this chair here and having this, just being honest, like we need to be able to sit and look at ourselves sometimes and say, you know, Cole McCoy just called. I value his opinion. He has a history in the business of being successful. He's not just somebody who shoots from the hip and, you know, he's, he's reckless with his words. He just said to me that we need to enhance our lead program by being better communicators from the lead coordinator position. We need to get better at delivering on leads, whatever it is true leadership and people who care about growing their business and they care about their people, they listen to that kind of feedback. Um, now, you don't always have to listen to what your critics say because critics are critics. But to your point, if your people are coming to you and people who have been there in the past and they have, you know, they've put up good business with you and they didn't leave on bad terms or with no sour grapes. I mean, you'd be a fool to not listen to those criticisms and that feedback to enhance your business and make it stronger. Yeah, and no one's saying you have to implement it. I'm just saying if you're willing to listen, that Look means if you're willing to to humble yourself to get better, like you're at least going to hear somebody out. Yes. Um, you know, it and look, no one's saying you anybody has to be perfect. There is no perfect setup. It's just just be willing to be honest to say that it's not the best the best out there. Like there's no best company. Just like when I go into a house you know, I can't say I represent the best company. There's a lot of really good options for, for people. Um, my job is to fight for you to find you what fits your needs, you know? And, and I think that's, I think we get lost in that, especially in recruiter world where we think we have the best things in sliced bread, but in reality, we probably do some things really well. And maybe it's there, there are definitely other organizations that do certain things really well as well. That's different from me. Um, that's okay. That's not a bad thing. It's just, are you willing to be honest about it? And that's what really uh, gets me fired up is when folks just give a jaded kind of MLM -y, um point of view. That's only, it's pretty transparent, but any agents that fall for that, I, I'm not sure it's necessarily in their bad, their best interest um, because they're getting, they're receiving Kool-Aid from somebody who's drunk on that Kool-Aid and like, can't see the full, scope of things or just genuinely don't have the knowledge of what else is out there to even compare. Right. That's the tough part. And that's kind of where you, it's not your job and it's not others jobs. You're kind of fighting the good fight for the agent in by enlightening them with, Hey, just a heads up, been there, done that. Um, and, you know, at the same time, if it's done to us and it's done in a, in a, in a professional manner, there's no reason to get butt hurt over it. So talk about the professional, <clears throat> excuse me, the professional ownership part of it for the agent, for the producer, as we've been discussing this topic and leading up to this discussion, professional responsibility, or I'm sorry, personal responsibility, the balance between the ownership of, of your own business. What does that mean? How does that work? And what are we talking about? Yeah. So again, this stems from seeing people constantly reaching out hey, I have some doubts about this. I'm coming from this organization. I'm looking for this. My question is, what did you do at that previous organization to set yourself up for success? Were you coachable? Did you do everything you were asked to do? Um, you know, were, were you working hard? That's that's another portion of this is, is agents don't necessarily, they see that there's all this other stuff out there, but did you do every single thing that you could possibly do to be successful. So, so that ownership, that extreme ownership uh, to quote some of my favorite uh, authors and speakers is so important. And if you're not doing everything that you can be, that you can be doing to be successful, it doesn't, no organization is going to fix that. It's just, it's just not going to happen. But are, are you willing to, if, if you don't hit your goal, are you willing to put a couple extra days in the field? Um, did you do that at your personal career, at your personal, uh, or previous, sorry, is the word I'm thinking of place to where, you know, it's, it's Friday and you haven't hit your goal. Are you willing to go see people on a Saturday? Um, you know, did, did you get in front of enough people every week? Um, were you in the field for, for 10 hours a day, but five of them, you're sitting at the gas station 
uh, on social media or playing Candy Crush on your phone? Or were you actually going to see people? You know, if you door knocked somebody, obviously it's a lead, you know, it's not a cold knock, but did, did you door knock somebody at 11 o'clock that didn't answer? Did you circle back around at six to see if they were home? You know, did, did you get good on the phone and put all the time needed to set appointments so you didn't have to door knock 18 people a day? You know, there are all these different factors that you have to take personal responsibility for your business or no organization is going to work for you. This is a 1099 commission setup. Um, you, you get out of it what you put into it. First and foremost, we have to have that conversation because once we kind of go in and talk about setups and man, this sounds good and that sounds good, no one's going to do the work for you. You have to put your head down and go make it happen. Wherever you're at, you could be at a disadvantage on commission. You could be at a disadvantage on product. You could be at a disadvantage on leads. You can, you know, I know for me, I didn't take a day off for four months when I first got into the business. You know, also, I didn't know anything else except that one captive company, but I feel I took pretty good personal responsibility to make sure that if I failed, it was not a work ethic issue. It was not a coachability issue. Just maybe wasn't a good fit. If you're at that point and you're still not getting the support you need and you see what else is out there and say, man, this could really be a benefit for my business. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Okay. Now we can have the conversation, but we have to have that piece implemented before we can even talk about a different organizational setup. That's powerful, man. That right there, we cut that part out. And somebody that's out there having questions, if they listen to just that, powerful gold in itself. And now I don't want to, I don't want to step on the next side of this and the other side of the coin here, but to the personal responsibility standpoint, if you're somebody out there that takes, you know, takes this opportunity as something that you do want to move forward with, you start doing your due diligence, you're asking around. If someone gives you advice based off of their personal experience and you just foo-foo it off, such as, hey, check the commission schedules before signing on. Hey, make sure you take a look at if there's a contract. You know, just because somebody tells you there's not a contract, that's part of their marketing pitch. It doesn't mean that's a great setup for you. Take a look at the commission schedule. If it's one of those, hey, we do 140s or 130s, whatever, I'll say it. I'm just going to say it. If it's one of those, take a look at your commission schedule. Why? Because if 90% of the business you're going to be writing is final expense, but your highest contract and your sign-on incentive was to get this huge contract, but all of your commissions that you're going to be being paid are going to be on a lower setup, you need to know that. And there are people out there who are trying to educate others on that, but it's falling on deaf ears because the Kool-Aid is so strong. I urge you, take notice of somebody like Cole, and there's some other amazing people out there who are trying to educate like, hey, I'm going to offer you this 120. Oh, okay, great, 120. That's on Term Life Express. That's on uh, this this term product. Most of what you're going to be buying lead wise, your main market, your main focus is going to be final expense. How about you make sure that your final expense commission levels are in line with what you were, what you were told they were going to be. Um, that's a big thing. I just, I know that I let the cat out of the bag and said that I'm not looking to wage war. I'm just being honest. And it's, you need to be transparent. Um, if you expect transparency and, you know, adhere to advice that's been given to you from others, um, because they've been around a while and they've probably already experienced it. So that's the other part of the personal responsibility for me um, that, you know, if you're going to lead yourself into a situation and you already were told, hey, look out for this, 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 and this, and you just walk forward into it anyway, that's your own fault. You're going to get us in trouble, Chase. I, hey, trouble's my middle name. <laughs> um, we're not looking no, to that's real. That's real. I mean, people, that's all. That's one of the glaring examples that we see all the time. It's like, can you be successful at that organization? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just, there are tons of people that are successful there. It's just for the average agent, they just want transparency. You know, if you're going to market a, a one, one, whatever, give that comp, not just with the company that pays you the most. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'll leave it at that. I, I'm like, I'm really not trying to be negative. It's just, let's, let's call, let's call a spade a spade here. Let's, let's be transparent. Um, you owe it to your people because yeah, you may, it's going to do one of two things. The managers are going to be the managers. Those people are wired that way. They're, they're going to, they're going to make money producing and then getting, getting downlines and, and getting overrides off of them. Those people are probably not going to hear this. Um, they're going to stay the same, but for the agent that's just trying to figure stuff out, that's always going to be a rub. Like 
anyway, let's transparency is so important. Um, that's one of the things I think as an organization that we owe our people, like if you're going to offer me a 90, but you're saying, Hey, this 90 is worth more than this other company's 120 because of all the support we're giving. I'm cool with that. Like, but call it what it is. Don't and shoot I think, an ad and say, yeah. we hand out the highest comp. We do this. We do that. This in the industry overall. And then when it's, it's not what you're saying it is, yeah. it's still a great setup. Just explain why it's a great setup. You know, yeah. that's the whole, that's my whole point. Yeah. And like, I'm not here to say that that setup isn't a great setup for certain agents. Exactly. I'm just saying, I think we, I think we owe it to the industry to just be honest. Um, anyway, I, I'll get off my horse on that one. Um, other hey, things record, are the blame on that was you did not open up that Pandora's box. That's on me. I was, I had to get that one out because I see that one every day. So go ahead. Yeah. I mean, and the other part of it is, is everyone wants to make, everyone's asking about leads. So it's leads is usually first and foremost slash compensation. So compensation, we kind of talked about just know what you have, you know, getting into it. And then leads is probably the next important Can you hear me? Am I, yep, am I cutting you. out? You're still there. Okay. You would say leads is like the most important or second most important thing or equal to the comp part, right? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Cool. So like. You could have 120% contract and nobody to see and make no yeah, money compared to absolutely. a 20% contract and tons of people, tons of activity and make more money, obviously. Absolutely. So just talking to an organization that you have access to plenty of leads. Um, I love the mortgage protection business. I love helping people protect their mortgages. Um, that's a beautiful thing. Problem is, um, there's only a certain amount of mortgages that you can get leads on, um, you know, especially with mail or internet or whatever. And so you have to get to a point where if you want to stay in mortgage protection, you have to work resold leads over and over and over and over. You have to. That's just the only way that that model works. And so those leads are given to you then somebody else and somebody else. And those are the people are buying them. So it actually turns into, into a revenue stream. Um, just if, if that's what you want to do, awesome. Again, transparency. Um, but leads are super important. Um, on the final expense side, there's so much sustainability that, you know, we don't have to worry about reselling a lead 20 times. You know, that's, that's not what we're here for. But knowing what you're getting into on the lead side of things, what's the quality of this lead piece? How is it marketed? Um, you know, from an organizational standpoint, um, leads is the lifeblood of, of how we're getting in front of people. Cause even if you're a referral guy, leads turn into referrals, which turn into more referrals, but you have to have a lead somewhere to, to start. So that's, that's very important. Also, you know, it's a model that you don't have to hit up your family and friends to buy insurance from you and then get to work for, then get them to work for you. You have people to constantly see that's massive. Um, and so, Again, from an, now we flip to the organizational side of it. If you have an agent that's willing to work really hard and, and, and obviously they're coachable and they're trying to get better at their sales process and overcoming objections and having a good presentation and building value and whatever, now you have to get something in their hands where someone has raised their hand requesting information about the product that also hasn't been seen by 10 agents in the last three months. That's the other part of this. This is from an organizational standpoint, Point, we have to be willing to be honest about where these leads are coming from. If I'm giving you a lead that's been that four of the people have seen, as long as I'm telling you about it, that's fine. But if you're saying, oh, here's some leads, you're going to make a bunch of money, go, you know, go make it happen. That's completely different. And unfortunately, a lot of people have that experience in the business. Just know that there are setups that have exclusive leads that have not been seen by a bunch of people. And when you get them in your hands, they had just been sent in within the last, you know, short amount of time, right? Um, also I do realize that these fresh exclusive leads, um, they cost more money. The point of entry is a lot higher and that's because, you know, your ROI is a lot higher, right? These are fresh leads. Um, they do cost a little bit of money to create. So you have a choice. You either have to put up money every week to pay for these leads or find a setup there. They do exist where they'll help you subsidize the lead cost. Um, that that's out there, right? If you, if you're, especially if you come from one of these organizations where you're spinning your wheels, you're running the lead, you're doing everything they told you to do, but you're running these reworked leads, right? It's, it's, 
by the time those leads get to you, it's hard. You know, it's like squeezing blood out of a turnip. All the sales have probably already happened that are going to happen or most of them. And really you're just pushing people around. And if they sign, if, if you're persistent enough to get them to sign a deal, they're probably going to cancel as soon as you leave anyway. They just gave up. So that way you, you know, you would, you would relent. Um, but just know if you can't afford leads, maybe the setup you were at, you had to go broke at and didn't work out, but you're willing to do all these other things, have someone help you pay for leads. There's no shame in that. Um, I, I think that's massive as well. It doesn't get talked about enough. Yeah. I mean, you covered a lot right there. Once again, I will cut that particular part up and that is super important for an agent to listen to, but I want to drill in on something that you touched on and I don't want to sound like I'm being contrarian here when I say this, but to your point about, you know, knowing that you're working a recycled lead or a lead that had been worked before, if you're listening to this right now and you're fairly inexperienced in this business, understand one thing, brand new leads are gold. They are amazing. And I highly recommend if you want to be successful, get yourself on a standing direct mail lead order. 25 a week minimum should be the goal. If you can just do 20, do 20. But 25 is a magic number and build yourself from there. But do not go into it. And I'm going to sound like I'm defending the IMO here and in my role here as a president. I don't want to sound like I'm being that guy. But Cole will testify to this. Just because you're buying brand new leads and they are in fact brand new does not mean that you're going to run into people who haven't been seen by somebody else. Understand that. So don't start accusing your IMO that, oh, well, there were two Lincoln Heritage people already here. Do you think your IMO is the only one sending mail out? Understand that and know that going in if you're fairly inexperienced. Right. Right. Number two, once again, transparency. Your responsibility as a personal producer, but also on this side of the table, it's our responsibility to be truthful and transparent when it comes to lead delivery. If your IMO is secretive uh, with everything, now understand there may be some, some secret sauce there that, you know, in terms of response rates and all that stuff that they may not want to give away. Um, that's okay. I get it. Back in the day, we owned our own mail house. I understand. But I think those things have kind of come and gone now. I think nowadays full transparency is really needed. You know, what is your cost? Are you marking up the leads on me when I buy them from you? Or am I buying them at your cost? That's big to know because at the end of the day, I need to know, are you making an override on me, training me, supporting me, mentoring me, making money there? Or are you also, also making money on me when it comes to yeah. lead sales if, as well? If you're marking up the leads, just tell me you're doing it, right? Exactly. Like Transparency. Let me make the decision. Exactly. Just yeah. let me know. Yeah. Uh, there are leads being sold out in the marketplace right now as quick, fast. I'm just going to say it's like an internet lead, I think. Uh, those get talked about a lot. Telemarketing leads are another one they get talked about. And there's people that we come to find out who are paying a lot of money for those leads when all that really, they're, they're really not that expensive. They're getting marked up by their upline or by their IMO. They really shouldn't be, but they are. So just transparency on the leads. Ask the questions, know what to ask and ask them. And uh, just seek that transparency and you shouldn't be let down. And on our side of the table, if you work from the executive level or you're at the home office, my opinion is you provide that transparency. Yeah. I, you know, are the leads going to be resold? As long as you're with our company, we're in good standings. You don't owe me money. You don't stick me with debt. These are your leads. You hold true to that. If they leave and they decide to do something else and there's no bad blood, whatever your stance is, make sure you're transparent with it and then hold true to that. Yeah. I mean, as long as... I'm not trying to get like, I'm not trying to bash any business models. I'm just saying, let's just be honest about it. And if you're, if you're caught off guard by something, make sure that it wasn't told to you in the beginning. And you know, if, if your opinion changes, just have a conversation. Hopefully you work with somebody that's understanding and humble enough to just let's talk about it. You know, let's figure this thing out. And like, you may not always agree. That's okay. But having that relationship and that credibility um, you know, especially if you were one of those agents that took personal responsibility, that goes a long way when you're having these conversations with, with folks. Um, and you would, you would find that guys like Chase and guys at the, at the top of the ladder are usually pretty understanding if you're doing your part. You know, that's all, you know, we have to talk about both sides of this coin. It's not fair to just bash all these setups because, you know, again, everyone has a business model. I'm not trying to get in the way of that. But as an organization, if you want to keep agents loyalty, being honest with them in any capacity about the leads, about the setup, about the comp goes a long way and offer what you're going to offer. And 
I could show, I could show, I, I personally could show you a ton of setups where for a certain agent, it's actually better for them. Like I know for what I do, I have certain agents that, you know, paying that lead bill every month is very, very stressful, but they're willing to put in the work. They're good agents. They're personally responsible. Um, they just can't justify that lead bill. And, you know, they're having a hard time, you know, Cole, I don't know if I want to pay for 20 leads a week, but I know I'm willing to do the work. It's just terrifying, but I, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. And I'm like, okay, well, in my mind, let me help you pay for leads, take a cut in compensation. I'll pay for your leads. Let's get you 40 a week. There are certain people in that setup, they might've had 120% comp on the 20 leads a week, but I'm doubling your activity in setting the appointments for you. Taking a, you know, Obviously it's a comp hit. We're going to talk about it. I'm not just going to be like, oh, well here, you know, and surprise, you have less, less comp, but we do that all the time. So I'm not saying that taking a little bit less commission for certain amounts of support can't make you more money. I can, I can show you in these setups and Chase, I know you have a really good example of a guy. Um, so we won't name names or anything, but did something similar and is like doubling or tripling the amount of deposits that they're getting in their account every month, which is what this is about. It's about revenue. Um, it's about supporting your family and building a legacy. Like that's what we get into this business for. Um, so different setups warrant, you know, consideration for certain people, but there's not like a one size fits all thing out there. We just, at every single point of the way have to be transparent about it. Flexibility is important in business. And if you plan on being a business that, you know, wants to grow and help more people, you know, there is not a one size fits all. The one size fits all can get big, but the cup can overflow with and a lot of people become residual damage. Um, they get or collateral damage, I guess, is a better way of phrasing it. To your point, yes, we have a program that we call the free lead program. Now, is it for everybody? No. Do you have to qualify for it? Yes. The qualifications, not going through all of those are some of the things that you mentioned. You have to be coachable. You have to be trainable. You have to be willing to do this, this, and this but you own your book of business from day one. You are in full control of your business. Yeah. You do take a little bit of a haircut and comp, but I do want to say something because I've seen this posted multiple times by some people that I respect. I, I consider them good friends in the business. I'm not going to name any names and embarrass them, but you know, they say there's no such thing as free. You're paying for it. Duh. You know, we know that. <laughs> uh, we, we obviously know that yeah. uh, because there's a, you know, an X amount of comp cut and difference here. We know that, but to your point, there's somebody that works with us right now. He is the example. 300,000 in production last year. And he did it on a free lead program. Could he have done it on the program where he gets the highest comp and he pays for those leads? Absolutely. He chose this program. Why? Because it was a mental thing. I don't want to have to see a bill come in every week. I just want to focus on my business and go to work. Yep. Yep. Now, that's just different for some people. And at the end of the day, some people want to buy a car. Some people want to lease a car. I think that the leasing part of it may be crazy, but you know what? That's my opinion. For someone else, leasing may be better for them because they want a new car every two years. They want to pay a lower payment. That's just their thing. That, that, that doesn't mean that that's the right way or the wrong way based off of my opinion. So I think a variety, I think a diversified approach is important. And at the end of the day, as long as it works as the desired effect should be, that's all that matters. Um, so, you know, you have the ability to move and that's one thing I love about what you're doing. You want to talk about diversification in your business, free lead agents. Boom. Here, I have this for you. Oh, you want to, you want, you want me to share the cost with you? You want to still get that little bit higher comp? Cool. I'll pay some of the cost. You pay some of the cost, or you just want the big comp. You want the, you've got all of that. And that's what makes you dangerous. I know a lot of people out there that will not bust their own checkbook out their own pocketbook, their own wallet and invest in an agent. I know you will. I know Ben Bowman will. Uh, and there's a lot of leaders that we work with and some out there with other organizations that will do that. If you're looking for a leader and you're saying, hey, look, I know I'll do it. I'm willing to commit. I'm willing to be all in. I want some help. I heard about this. Can you offer it to me? You know, you'll see if somebody's really all in with you or not. And they're willing to bet on you. So I love that point that you made. Yeah, that's massive. I mean, I, I can I'm not going to throw any names out or embarrass anybody, but I'm thinking like three or four guys right now that um, were kind of on their way out that just needed someone to see their potential, jump in the trenches with them. We are, this is in the, in the trenches podcast, I guess, Funny. but jump in there with them and just like give them some intensive support, really breathe some life into their business. 
and I can tell you, um, you know, these, these are people, whether we do business together forever or not, like they would, they would consider, I mean, these are lifelong relationships because it's, it goes deeper. Like, obviously we're in business and it has to make sense financially, but when you're willing to do stuff like that, I mean, it can change somebody's whole, whole setup. Case in point, um, case in point, two dudes last month, two guys, weirdly enough, both of them used to be DJs back in the day, opposite ends of the United States. One of them did a blitz last month and wrote over $34,000 in one week. Totally green, totally new to the industry. That's insane. I'm not making it up. There were no annuities or single premiums mixed in. We're talking about straight life business. Final expense to be exact. One guy over here, totally away from the one part of the United States. This other guy, former DJ as well, he wrote 41,000 last month and he's only been in the business for about six months now. So don't tell me training, mentoring, and being plugged into the right setup isn't, isn't important. If you go listen to uh, episode number five of the uh, Elite Producer Podcast, I had a chance of sitting down with Dave DeFord. Dave failed out of the business. Dave says in there point blank, and he's blogged about it. It's in his book. You know, he started with us when he was 26. He said, I had the right setup. But what I did was I got too smart for my own good. Dave is an extremely intelligent guy, as we all know. Um, yeah, he's a real deal. He overthought it. He thought he could build his own lead. He was going to do this. It wasn't the right setup. So if you find something and it's working, don't look to overhaul it. Look to improve upon it, but do it with your mentor because that mentor has probably been around the block a little bit longer. Um, And I don't want to rant on this, but I know we're coming to the close here. I'm just going to say this, and I'm going to say it once again, not targeting anybody in particular. That's not what we do, but educating agents because we have a lot of people who find our channel and they'll just message us and say, hey, thanks for that video. Um, I'm going to say this. If you have an opportunity and somebody approaches you with an LOA setup, I I got, I think people got pissed at us for this last time, but I'm just going to say it. Make sure that it is in your benefit. Make sure that you own your book of business at the end of the day. You don't want to work for a year, two years, three, however long, pour your sweat equity into your business and not own your business. Number one. Number two, we talked about it a moment ago. If you're offered something that seems too good to be true, read the fine print and make sure that it is what it is and that it's legitimate. Number three, get a guy like him. Find a guy like Cole McCoy, Ben Bowman, Holden, at least people, Eddie Mahalan, all of these guys. If you talk to one of them, you're going to know very quickly if there's a genuine approach or not. You're also going to know if there's a snake oil salesman approach there. If your gut and your heart are telling you this guy's a good guy, he's a family man, he's going to have my back. It's hard to tell that just initially. Those are the people you want to do business with and just ask for transparency. If they squirm, if they wiggle, when they ask for you to just be truthful with me from from day one, that's not the right fit for you. If you get a, oh, well, uh, you know, that's not the right person for you. Don't, Don't get pushed into a situation that you're just not ready for. Find somebody that's going to give you the time. That's not going to be short with you when you ask a question. They're not going to be like, oh, just figure it out or, oh, it's here. Make sure you have somebody who's going to give you that time and necessary. And I know I'm, I sound like I'm promoing you here and I'll probably do it till the cows come home. But I've seen what you've done in the long time that we've worked together here, the few years we've worked together. Um, recent history, if I only knew Cole McCoy for the past six months, uh, uh, Lord have mercy. I, I see the blood, sweat and tears you pour into the agents. I would I would wholeheartedly recommend if you're on the fence right now, give Cole a call. Even if you decide not to work with him, he'll tell you the, the do's and the don'ts and the wills and the won'ts of some of these other organizations and just be straight up with you, which I think transparency is is half the battle in our business, as Cole alluded to. So that's my rant. I'm over. Yeah, I'm, I'm not perfect by any means. I certainly have my flaws. Um, but I guess why I'm so passionate about transparency in our industry, Chase, is uh, – You've been there. Dude, I've been there one. I've been one of those agents that something like something goes wrong one week. Like I've been one week away from being out of the business a, a few times. Almost was out anyway. And looking back, I'm like, how does this happen? You know, and there's some personal responsibility on certain things, and I'm willing to own that. But gosh, um, I know some agents that weren't personal friends that weren't as fortunate that just didn't have a transparent setup. Um, maybe they didn't know better. Maybe, um, you know, who, who knows? But if I can, that agent that can do our business well, that is cut out for it, that has the right mentality, 
that's willing to do what it takes. If I can just give them a leg up to, to really see it take off, like that's what we're here for. Um, yes, it's a business. Yes. We do make money when our agents sell policies. Like that's what, I mean, of course, but it's like, it has to be deeper than that. It has to be deeper than a number for me, value goes back to legacy. I know I've probably said this a million times in here. Value goes back to lives protected. Value goes back to, you know, being remembered for something great. Um, yeah, like, and if that's where your head is at, not just making a quick buck, you're usually going to put other people first. Um, one of my favorite quotes is this guy named is Bob Goff. I heard him say this live one time, actually. Um, he said, people will, people will know you for what you do work, you know, hobbies, whatever people will remember you. And I think he says it for how you love them, but how you, how you treat them how you stepped in in the midst of a crisis and provided a solution. Um, to me, that is the crux of the insurance business. That's the crux of um, being a dad and a husband. Um, I don't just want them to, to remember me for, oh, dad worked a lot. Like, what am I working for? Um, what do I want to be remembered for? And it has to go into that conversation to really get to the heart of, of helping other people make it in this business. And if you have that mentality, it doesn't matter if you're on a 50% comp, a hundred percent comp, a 3000% comp. If you're providing value in that, in, in that capacity, you can make it anywhere. Um, I want to be abundantly clear about that. There, there are people that are really, really good people at some of these setups that may have some of these flaws but they're making it happen. Like I want to applaud that person. I just, I would just hate seeing somebody fail for all the reasons we've talked about because they, they had someone that was thinking about their checkbook, their pocketbook before thinking about what might be best for the individual that, that they're in front of. I'll leave it at that, man. I, I get so fired up about this topic and probably what even spurred me to talk about this today. Um, there's so much good that we can do. There's so many good setups out there. I just wish they got more publicity. Um, so yeah, I mean, you I'm have such an out eloquent, for now. eloquent way with your words, Mr. McCoy, whereas I'm more of a, I'm more of a caveman and I'll just say, be cautious of the wolf in sheep's clothing, ask for transparency. And as Cole said there, dude, you said it, there are some amazing people at all of the organizations that get talked about whether it's a three letter company or a four letter company, or it's, you know, multiple work, it doesn't matter. There are amazing people within these organizations. There's amazing leadership there in certain positions. Just ask the questions and trust your gut, you know, trust, uh, trust your heart that, you know, your that the decision you're making is the right one, but make sure you know the questions to ask. And like I said, dude, I, that's one of the reasons why I'll, I'll ride or die with you all day. Cause I know that you care about your people. I know, you know, Bowman, Eddie, all, I know the whole crew. Holden, I know that the heart is in the right place. They're not just another number. They're a part of the team. They're a part of the nation. And uh, I love it. So appreciate you doing the jumping in. We're doing this uh, podcast again. And we'll have to crank some more out here pretty soon. Yeah. Sooner rather than later, dude. There's some Sooner cool stuff. Later. It's, you're going chasing on, me. We can talk about. So I, I got to make sure I put time aside. So I appreciate you, buddy. All right, man. Have a good day.